Jerry Lane, a former employee of the UN, his wife Karen, and his two kids, Rachel and Constance, get up and eat breakfast together, Constance, the youngest daughter, is informed by Jerry that he left his work in order to spend more time with the family, there are reports about conflict and discussions of martial law on television, the city is afterwards besieged by a swarm of zombies who move very swiftly, biting individuals, and turning the bitten very quickly, they are sitting in. Philadelphia's congested traffic at this time, during the panicked surge, the lanes are involved in a vehicle accident, and Jerry discovers it takes a bitten individual around 12 seconds to transform. When they reach a huge grocery store close to Newark, New Jersey, Jerry is able to obtain some medication for his oldest daughter, Rachel, who is having a severe asthma attack as a result of the shock and stress of what has occurred to them. Karen loads up on whatever food she can find there. When robbers attack his wife, Jerry kills one of them, releasing Karen. While Jerry is holding the gun above his head, Though a police officer may attempt to arrest him, however, the cop is actually just looking for supplies. The family seeks sanctuary in a Newark apartment building outside the store, an old friend of Jerry's, Deputy Secretary General Thierry Omotoni, telephones the family and informs them that he is sending a helicopter to rescue them, but that it won't get there until the next morning. The next morning, the lanes try to access the roof by sneaking through the mostly deserted tenement, but the undead catch them and chase them up to the top, on the way, they run into Tomas, a group of zombies assault Jerry and spit blood on him, as he approaches the edge of the roof, Jerry prepares to jump off if the blood on his face causes him to lose his composure, he doesn't, and the family boards the helicopter to flee after fending off another swarm of the undead, the lanes are transported by helicopter to a US Navy aircraft carrier off the coast of New York City, Along with a large group of other refugees, a team of scientists and military officers on board are assessing the breadth of the global pandemic, they arrive to find Thierry there, who sets them up with bunks. Dr. Andrew Fassback, a virologist, believes that the plague is a virus that must be identified in order for a vaccine to be created, Jerry is charged with assisting Fassback in locating the outbreak's origins due to his experience as a former UN investigator in exchange for assurances that his family will be safe, Jerry grudgingly agrees to assist, he is then transported to Camp Humphreys, a military installation in South Korea, where the epidemic may have originated, according to an email. That was received around 11 days earlier. Jerry's crew is assaulted by zombies moments after arriving at the facility, the terrified and cowardly fastback accidentally shoots himself to death after falling on the C-130 plane's ramp, Jerry and the others must flee when the gunshot informs the zombies that are prowling the area, Jerry discovers that the zombies are drawn to noise after being saved by the people of the base who are still alive. A Korean soldier was conducting research in the field when he was assaulted and transformed. According to the base's soldiers, led by Captain Speed, his conversion took a lot longer than what had been seen in more recent times, the diseased man's body assaulted the base doctor, and they were both set on fire, in order to avoid being assaulted, one of Speak's men was able to stand in the center of the infected individuals, as he relates to Jerry, the soldier responds that something has been hurting him recently when Jerry asks how he hurt his leg. The soldier walks with a small limp. Jerry meets with Hafner, an ex-CIA agent who was jailed for supplying guns to North Korea, he tells Jerry a horrifying story of how the North Korean authorities was able to limit the spread in their nation by extracting the teeth of every resident within a 24-hour period, preventing infecting each other through bites. Hafner instructs Jerry to travel to Jerusalem, where the Israeli Mossad had prepared a safe zone immediately before the epidemic was officially recognized, hinting that Israel may have had foreknowledge of what was to occur. Speak soldiers ride in a fleet of bicycles to avoid making any noise while refueling the C-130 and boarding Jerry, when Karen tries to reach Jerry, his satellite phone goes off, and the undead attack. Jerry and the C-130 pilot leave once the jet is properly refueled. Jerry visits Mossad commander Jürgen Warmbrunn in Jerusalem, who says that the Mossad intercepted messages from an army general in India months before, claiming that Indian forces were fighting the Rakshasa, or dead spirits, Warmbrun also tells how the core of Jerusalem was walled off, the wall is imposing, at least 50 feet high, and refugees, including non-Jews and Muslims, are being taken into the quarantine zone, while Jerry is speaking with Jürgen, 
a group of Muslim immigrants began to sing joyfully about having found a safe haven to live in. One of the women locates a microphone, and the singing becomes more audible. Attracted by the song, the zombies outside begin to scale the protective wall, building a large pile that finally makes its way inside the city. While running, Jerry witnesses that the zombies disregard an elderly man and a malnourished youngster. Jerry's escort, Segan, a young Israeli lady soldier, gets bitten by a zombie, Jerry promptly amputates her hand to stop the infection from spreading, counting to twelve until he is certain she will not turn. Jerry and Segan ultimately get at the airport and board a Belarus Airways flight after Jerry's pilot panics and flees. When Jerry contacts Thierry, he requests the location of the nearest who are CDC-type lab, and they are sent to a WHO research center in Cardiff, Wales, a stowaway zombie gets unleashed from the cargo hold and attacks a flight attendant while the plane is in the air. She assaults the other passengers, Jerry detonates a grenade to kill the zombies, and the jet crashes near Cardiff. Segan and Jerry continue as the only visible survivors of the disaster, albeit Jerry has been stabbed by a piece of metal, Segan locates him, and the two proceed to Cardiff to the WHO facility. Due of his lack of communication, the U.S. Navy concludes he is dead and deports his family to Nova Scotia. Jerry drops out at the facility's entrance and awakens three days later tied to a gurney, his wound healed and bandaged, he is able to persuade the facility's employees that he is there on a specific purpose, the guys watching him dial his wife's satellite phone, when Thierry answers the phone, he informs Jerry that his family has been designated as non-essential individuals and has been transported to a land-based institution, Jerry is unhappy, but Thierry is able to prove Jerry's identity. To the skeptical WHO personnel, Jerry reveals to the skeptical scientists that because the old man and the sickly boy in Jerusalem were ignored, the infected do not bite seriously injured or terminally ill people. He offers to inject himself with a fatal but curable infection to test his theory. However, after a doctor accidentally infected himself, the wing of the facility where the germs are held was overrun by zombies, Jerry resolves to obtain a pathogen anyhow, with the help of Segan and one of the WHO specialists, Jerry eventually makes it to the pathogen vault after fighting his way past the undead. Jerry loads a small box containing pathogen vials from two different cupboards, the scientists are filming him and note that the left cabinet contains lethal and incurable illnesses, Jerry is about to depart when he notices one of the zombie physicians outside, he decides to inject himself to determine if his idea would work when he is cornered and without a proper weapon. He hands the scientists a message that says, Tell my family I love them and selects a vial at random from the box, Jerry. Waits a few moments before opening the vault door, Jerry is allowed to go away. Through the army of zombies that has infected the facility, since the former doctor ignores him. When he returns to the secure area of the institution, everyone rejoices at the success of his idea, and the physicians cure him of the infection, Jerry returns to his family in Freeport. Nova Scotia, in a safe zone. A vaccine made from lethal infections is produced to serve as camouflage for troops fighting the afflicted. Airdrops are used to spread the virus over the planet, human offensives against the zombies begin, restoring hope, Russia has been especially effective in preventing the epidemic using military and civilian force. This isn't the end, Jerry says. It's not even close.